The ANC's National Executive Committee is meeting this weekend as the knives are out between Jacob Zuma and Cyril Ramaphosa. Zuma wrote a scathing letter to the president accusing him of throwing ANC members under the bus to save his own skin. That's over Ramaphosa's stance on corruption within the party. Zuma challenged him to come clean. Let's explore this further with political analyst Karima Brown. Karima, thanks for your time this afternoon. So lots happening at this ANC-NEC meeting. And as you said yesterday, Sil Ramaphosa has communicated with the uh, Integrity Committee regarding the CR17 campaign funds. But what now? Well, I think what is important, Anneli, is the fact that uh, the president, of course, issued a missive to members, um, you know, so, a week ago. And that's what he has come in for criticism of, of uh, from President Jacob Zuma. So the fact that Sir Ramaphosa, as the president of the ANC, has now told the NEC that he's been in communication with the party's integrity committee regarding any questions uh, surrounding the CR17 campaign funds, which is, of course, the monies that were used to get him elected as party president in a very tightly contested race uh, between himself and Nkosa Zana Damini Zuma, uh, that puts a completely different spin on the preparedness of ANC members to um, put themselves at the mercy of the commission. As you know, Anneli, um, ANC Secretary General Ace Mahashule, a big ally of Jacob Zuma, has been summoned by that very integrity committee. Uh, in the week, he actually denied that he was asked to come and see them uh, subsequent to his comments that he would not step aside uh, during any investigations into him. So I think the fact that Cyril Ramaphosa has now thrown down the gauntlet, uh, so to speak, uh, by saying he's uh, happy to go to the committee, talk about his campaign funds, puts someone like Ace Mahashule in a very big uh, corner. Hmm. What powers does the integrity committee really have, given the fact that the ANC-NEC first needs to process and ratify any recommendations it makes? Well, I think the NEC and the Integrity Committee works hand in glove. So going into this meeting, if you remember the contents of Cyril Ramaphosa's letter, he reminded everyone, including ANC members, of a conference resolution uh, that the ANC took, which essentially uh, was used by the party's provincial structures in KZN yesterday when it recalled uh, the powerful former Etequine Mayor Zandi Legumedi as a member of the provincial legislature. So the NEC, whilst it can process uh, the discussions and decisions of the integrity committee, it has to implement that conference resolution. And that is where the integrity committee's uh, powers come from, Anneli, with regard to the question of corruption and the issues in front of it. And I think Cyril Ramaphosa has been very smart and deftly cornered, uh, you know, the NEC, uh, many of which um, have themselves answering, uh, you know, having to answer questions around their involvement in corruption. We think of people like Mosi Benzi Zwane, we think of Bongani Bongo. Uh, you know, these are all people, powerful NEC members, who have not just... Um, have to explain themselves in terms of state capture in the party. They also have law enforcement agencies looking at their links, um, you know, with uh, the Estina Dairy matter and state capture, uh, you know, conversations and allegations. So a very smart move, empowering the Integrity Committee to act on the conference resolution. So in a, a sense, Amelie, the uh, NEC of the ANC will have to support the work of the Integrity Committee because the conference of the ANC, which is its highest decision-making body, has decided on this matter. So a very smart political ploy from the president of the African National Congress, Cyril Ramaphosa. There are also rumors of a cabinet reshuffle. What would such a move mean for Cyril Ramaphosa? And is he likely to do it any time soon? There's a lot of rumors, uh, you know, we've seen um, the uh, financial agency Bloomberg um, going on uh, Twitter saying that the president is likely to reshuffle his cabinet. Now, as you know, Anneli, that, um, you know, agency uh, takes a very keen interest in matters of the National Treasury and the Finance Ministry. So there's a lot of rumors that Tito Mbowene, who has been chastised by Sir Ramaphosa for speaking out about the way in which Ghana 
China had dealt with its central bank, uh, you know, head, um, and the president making, uh, you know, a big uh, issue about the fact that um, the finance minister, Tito Mboweni, has been spoken to harshly and has been disciplined. Uh, there's a lot of rumors that Tito Mboweni is peeved that he has written to the African National Congress and, of course, to the president uh, and has uh, tendered his resignation. Sources inside the meeting suggest that he has been asked to hold off on that move until after the NEC meeting. And I suppose that is where those uh, rumors of a potential cabinet reshuffle comes from. And, of course, if a finance minister is resigning, uh, all your rating agencies, all your investor communities, suddenly look at the cabinet and the leadership of Cyril Ramaphosa in a completely different light. So that is something that we have to keep a very close eye on, uh, and we have to get confirmation from the African National Congress whether or not Tito Mboweni, who is an NEC member, has in fact tendered his resignation, uh, both inside the NEC uh, and, of course, also as a member of Cyril Ramaphosa's cabinet. Mm. There has been quite a bit of fake news coming out as well. What do we to make of it all, given that there's also leaked information from within the meeting, and how do we sort of decipher that from all the fake news surrounding it? You know, Anneli, I think the fact that there's so much fake news coming out is a testimony to the fact that the organization is deeply divided. So, as you know, politics, as much as it is about power, it's also about perception. And I think both factions are trying to manage perceptions about how strong they are and who's likely to win this uh, big battle that is ensuing, you know, uh, as we speak. And I think uh, we've already seen uh, fake tweets coming out. You've seen someone like Juduzani Zoom the son of former President Jacob Zuma, tweeting saying uh, he's not going to serve out his full term. He's not going to, uh, you know, uh, serve out uh, his presidency. And this is, of course, in reference to uh, what is now a deleted tweet from NEC member Tony Ngene, uh, who apparently, according to this uh, fake news, had um, put forward a motion of no confidence in Cyril Ramaphosa. And I have spoken to several officials inside uh, the ANC, including including its top six. And all of this is fake information. In fact, uh, it looks as if the faction aligned to Ace Mahashule and Jacob Zuma is taking quite a beating inside that um, meeting. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, both sides want to give the impression that they're emerging as the victor. So as journalists and as news outlets, we have to go to the source, which is, of course, the African National Congress's officials. And we have to make sure that we are dealing in facts and is able to tell a truth from a lie. But I must say, the African National Congress factions, Anneli, is not making it easy because they are the ones from where these fake information is emanating from. Karima Brown, I'm looking forward to the fix tomorrow. Uh, is this going to be one of your talking points or what can we expect on the agenda for tomorrow's show? Absolutely, Andy. So I have the ANC's Deputy Secretary General, Ms. Jessie Duarte, as my main guest. Uh, uh, you know, she's our big hitter, as we like to call it, on the fix. She's going to be speaking to us. And of course, uh, top of mind will be uh, whether, in fact, Tito Mbowene has resigned uh, from the NEC, whether there is, uh, you know, moves to uh, get ANC members to go to the Integrity Committee and, moreover, to step aside uh, whilst they are doing so as investigators are ongoing, uh, and to confirm some of the information that we have uh, only been able to attribute to sources. So uh, the fix, a very big uh, conversation tomorrow. Uh, finally, an African National Congress top six member speaking on the record about the all-important outcomes and uh, ongoing conversations and discussions that are happening as we speak, Anli. So definitely a date with me tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock on the NCA. Great. I will definitely be tuning in. Thanks very much, uh, Karima Brown.